So whether you guys are new to bass fishing or you've been doing it for a long time, you'll definitely know that there are so many different ways to catch bass. You can go slow, you can go fast, you can fish shallow, you can fish deep, you can fish big lures and really, really tiny lures. There's really not one that is better than the other, they are just meant for different situations. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the topic of finesse. What is the term finesse when it comes to bass fishing? And I'll show you guys how you can use finesse fishing to more broaden your bass fishing experience, and of course, catch more fish. Let's talk about it. Well, how's it going everybody and welcome back to TRF. If you guys are not subscribed to this channel, hit that subscribe button because I make it my goal every single video on this channel to help you guys become better bass anglers. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about kind of a terminology side of fishing. You know, there are so many different terms when it comes to where to throw, what to throw, how to work, what you throw, where you threw it. And it can definitely all get confusing. So that is why I made a video a few months back covering every single piece of fishing terminology I could think of. I will have a link to be in the corner as well as in the video description below. Now you may have heard the word finesse or finesse fishing as a term uh, anywhere around the bass fishing industry, whether it's other YouTubers videos, uh, pro fishing tournament coverage, everybody likes to throw around the term finesse. But what does the term finesse when it comes to bass fishing actually mean? Well, the dictionary definition of finesse is the skillful, artful, or diplomatic handling of something that might be difficult for others intricate or refined delicacy. And I'm really going to focus in on that last one right there, intricate or refined delicacy. And that definition, in my experience, is what makes finesse fishing finesse. You are taking uh, a super broad, uh, you know, lure category, and you are going down to the intricate parts, you know, beyond what other people maybe are capable of doing or know how to do. You are taking your rod, reel, line, and lure. You are making it more intricate and delicately refined. Now, what's the need for that? What is the need to take lures that, like a Cinco or a rattle trap, they catch fish everywhere? What is the need to take those lures and make them more delicate and refined? There are two situations in which you must do that. The first of which being, the bass just see too many of the same lure. And so if you throw something different, oftentimes smaller and more detail oriented, the fish are gonna ha gravitate towards biting, that sort of thing. And then of course, the second reason is when the bass get really cold, when a high pressure system like we have right now moves in and really kind of pushes those fish deeper in the water column, they oftentimes don't bite the same moving baits like a, a crankbait, a square bill, a, a chatterbait, a topwater, and they want something presented very, very slowly, either as close to the bottom as possible or as close to their face as possible. So finesse usually means the downsizing of your entire presentation and the effort to catch fish that either have seen too many fast, loud baits or just aren't in the mood to chase. Downsizing though makes your lure harder to throw. And so do you need a spinning rod to throw a finesse lure as we're gonna talk about in this video? I'll talk about my favorite four, five, six uh, finesse lures that I throw. So do you need a spinning rod for that? No, but will it help? Yes, if we are going by the definition of finely tuned and, and delicate, a spinning rod is just better and more well suited for throwing these light, smaller lures and having more feel over them than a baitcaster is. I'm a huge advocate of baitcasters for almost everything besides today's topic, which is finesse fishing. I'm gonna hop on the front deck right now to prove to you guys that it is much easier to cast and control a finesse lure like a Ned Rig on a spinning rod over a baitcaster. So here we go. We got the baitcaster with a Ned Rig on it. And we've got a, where'd it go? I tied it on, spinning rod with a Ned Rig on it. The Baitcaster is a 7.2 medium. I think I have 15 pound fluorocarbon on here. Uh, of course the reel doesn't really matter, just a big casting reel. And here I've got 15 pound Seagar Smackdown braid with uh, a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. So we're gonna go first with the spinning rod. I'm just gonna kinda get, I don't know, foot, foot and a half a line out there, make a cast, super easy. I have that marked right there. I'm gonna put that down. Take one cast with a bait caster and oh, literally gave it my all. Only got about three quarters of the way there. Now when it comes to reeling your Ned Rig back in and feeling it, I'm gonna reel in my line on my spinning rod and I can literally feel my Ned Rig on the bottom right there. If I reel in the bait caster, honestly, it's just kind of too light. I can't really feel anything. It just kind of feels like I'm pulling in a, a dead weight. I'm telling you guys, I'm not lying. When I move these two, 
I can feel more on my spinning rod than I can feel on the bait caster. But I think the advantage, like I showed you guys a second ago, really comes on the cast. With my bait caster, I really have to learn where to let go to get that finesse lure to fly where I want it to, or else it's either gonna fly way too high or it's gonna dig into the bottom. So if I'm just kind of fishing out here, I reel in, make a quick cast, it goes way farther left than I want it to. So with the spinning rod, I feel like you have a whole lot more control over where your lure is going, which is usually the case with a bait caster. Usually a bait caster, you have a lot more feel uh, and control over where you're going. But I've just found with it, with the finesse lures, it's better to throw on a spinning rod because yeah, I just, I gave that thing a full heave and it still shot straight forward because of how light it is. Now, I'm not saying you can't find a spinning uh, a bait caster that fits finesse lures well. I just think in terms of, of casting distance, feel, and getting a proper hook set that's not too strong into those fish because your bait caster might end up being a little bit too strong uh, of, of, a, of an action for those fish. I think a spinning rod is 100% the way to go. So let's sit back down and talk about my top five favorite finesse lures. The first of those lures being a shaky head. A shaky head is one of those lures that I can throw anywhere and everywhere. Today, I'm throwing it on rocks and grass. I love throwing it in brush piles. I love throwing it, kind of hopping it along the sides of docks. It is my all-purpose finesse lure. And I think the reason why is just because it almost has that Texas rig variation uh, effect where you can throw it uh, on any sort of worm, any sort of uh, any sort of creature bait on that shaky head. But of course, in a finesse situation, I am downsizing my jig head and the hook as well as the worm that I have on here. Usually my shaky head setup is a, a tiny little shaky head like this, either a ball head or a flat head with the Strike King uh, baby finesse worm. Uh, it's the fat baby finesse, I think it's a five and a half or a six inch finesse worm. And I think it just fits perfectly in that little finesse category. And as always, all the gear that I talk about will be linked below in the video description. Make sure you guys, when you're shopping for your tackle, I don't care if it's this product or anything else, make sure you guys click through those links because it tracks your purchase to my account and helps me make affiliate income. But the rod reel and line for almost all of these, I think four out of the five, is of course going to depend on you know your water clarity and your, and your cover. But most of the time, I'm throwing it on 15 or 20 pound Seaguar Smackdown braid to a 10 pound, sometimes eight pound if the fish are, are you know in super clear water or the fish have just seen a ton of lures, I'll throw eight pound. But it's mostly 10 pound, sometimes 12 if I'm throwing in trees or, or a brush pile. But that's kind of my general spinning setup with a seven foot medium or a seven or six nine, I believe it is six nine medium light for the second lure on my list, which is a drop shot. A drop shot is another one of my all-purpose uh, finesse type lures. And while the shaky head isn't always finesse, you can actually throw a, a much larger shaky head head. I've even thrown a one ounce shaky head with a giant, giant straight tail worm, 10, 12 inch straight tail worm. That is no longer a finesse presentation. So don't get that wrong. When I say shaky head is finesse, not always, but in this situation it is. Drop shot is almost always finesse. I can't think of a situation in which drop shot wouldn't be finesse fishing, unless of course you were throwing it on a bait caster with heavier line and you were drop shotting like a, a creature bait. But that is such a small niche thing. When people say drop shot, they usually mean a small finesse worm, a small little uh, you know creature bait, a tiny worm that is great for catching bass that are sitting slightly off the bottom. I throw a drop shot a ton around grass and sparse cover as well as drifting it offshore in current for smallmouth bass. I think when it comes to the finesse category there's probably no more finesse lure than a drop shot because that drop shot sits in one area kind of shakes up and down. Oftentimes you don't even have to impart any action on the rod tip because just the fact of that lure sitting up in the water column is actually giving it all the action it needs. Lure number three in my finesse category is going to be the Ned Rig. The Ned Rig is just one of those lures that catches fish anywhere you go, especially in my opinion, smallmouth bass. Now, I have cut largemouth on it, but most of the time I'm throwing it up in a smallmouth situation. But just because I say that doesn't mean you can't catch spotted bass or shoal bass, whatever. It catches fish all around the country. And in my experience, I think it represents a, a crawfish that has lost both of its claws and it's been scientifically proven, I think by Berkeley back in the day, that uh, it's all gimmicks why companies put claws out there to imitate crawfish because bass will actually hit a crawfish fish more often when it has the claws taken away uh, because it has of course no defense mechanism. So I have made a video on all of these lures and of course along with the tackle for that I will link my specific instructional video for these because I'm not really going into detail on how to fish these or how to rig these because I have specific videos on those already. But Ned Rig, just 
cast it out there, hop it off the bottom, drag it. It is really kind of a, a do nothing lure. Much like a, a spinner bait, we cast it and retrieve it straight back in. Uh, a Ned rig, you cast it and just kind of hop it along the bottom pretty dang slow. Lure number four for my finesse category kind of steps up into, uh, again, something that could be not a finesse lure, and that is a wacky rig. I think a wacky rig, uh, of course, if you can throw it on a six, seven inch Cinco, it, I don't think that really counts any longer as finesse. The only reason why I put a wacky rig with a full size you know, five inch Cinco in the finesse category is because it falls very, very slowly and you can fish it, like I said, on a spinning rod or on a bait caster in deeper water with a little weighted wacky hook. I'll have, have B-roll shots, of course, of all of these lures uh, to show you guys more up close, but I love the wacky rig. I find that it catches fish, especially around shadow shallow lay down logs, um, d skipping under docks, skipping it underneath um, overhanging trees. A lot of the places where other finesse lures like the Ned Rig, the Shaky Head, really can't get and really can't sit in the strike zone a long time. I found the Wacky Rig fits that need perfectly well. And the last lure that I have in my finesse category is going to be the small swim bait. This here is a small little outcast tackle swim bait head with, of course, the Strike King Rage Swimmer. It's just one of those lures that catches fish all over the place and much like the Ned Rig where you hop it off the bottom, don't do a whole lot with it, same thing goes with this. You are casting it out there, you are letting it hit to the bottom or you are counting it down to a specific depth zone and then reeling it slowly back to the boat. Uh, of course, I like to throw five of these on an Alabama rig, which then again makes it not finesse. But oftentimes a singular swim bait like this can trigger a bass to eat when nothing else will. And again, going back to the, the ability to control and cast your lure, you cannot throw this small little swim bait here on a bait caster. It just, it won't work. You will not get the distance out of it. You will not be able to feel what is down there. Oftentimes, bait casting gear ratios are too fast to keep this thing in the strike zone. So you need a spinning rod to throw a small swim bait like this or a small grub, which is what I used to use a ton and will probably make a video on here this winter. Again, I gotta tell you guys this, I have videos about almost all of these lures, if not all of them, linked in the video description. Make sure you guys, if you're ever wondering, has Tyler made a video about XYZ fishing technique, I probably have. So make sure you guys are always searching on YouTube, Tyler's Real Fishing, and then insert whatever topic you wanna to find uh, because most likely I've got a video out there for it. Without further ado, let's hop on the front deck and show you guys some awesome fish catches. I got two bites. There's one. Are you kidding me? Come on. He's still there? Oh, he's high, he came back. Would you look at that? That's a skinny fish. All right, well, plugged along with a shaky head long enough till we got a bite. So hopefully we found a little pot of fish. That right there is your classic Texas fall bass. Not feeding up on anything. <laughs> there are so many minnows. Why are you not fat? As always, let's cast back in there because they could be schooled up together. Could be more of them boys down there. There's one, there's one. Ha ha ha, no, no! What the heck happened? Gosh, my bail opened. That was funky. We have found a little school of fish. Little guy. Where are the big ones though? There's one on the old drop shot. Ha ha! They're all small though, where are the big ones? I saw this fish down there on live scope and dropped on him and ah, and he ate it. Oh, come on, come on. There he is. Came back for it. Ha <laughs> ha. That's what you do right there, folks. That is what you do. When you get a bite and they miss it, you let it sit there and oftentimes they will come back and nab it. There's one. No, oh, that was fun. That was cool. Ha <laughs> ha. I literally worked my shaky head like a swim bait and I saw a fish suspended. I reeled the shaky head right past that fish and then watched him on my fish finder chase me up and I just kept reeling and jerking, reeling and jerking and eventually he nabbed it. Shaky head getting the job done. I just, I'm just convinced there are big ones probably beneath these smaller fish. I just gotta get down to them. There's one. Aha! Got him. Where are the big ones? Ah! There's one. 
That one feels nicer. That one feels nicer. What do we got? Is it a bigger one? It's slightly bigger. Hey, hey, hey. Bring it up. Oh, no, it's not. How did this fish fight so hard? My goodness. That fish is legit, like not two inches bigger. Gee, 